So what's your uh, question? Yeah, so a lot of uh, the courses have like that agricultural. <laughs> We have our Innovation Expo in the back, which features 20 or so students that have done some really amazing work um, on problems related to energy. Uh, we are giving out $1,000 in prizes for students. Time to go and look at the student presentations. Um, use the QR code that's over here and vote for who you think uh, is your favorite. <laughs> That's it. We'll do more um, announcements later, uh, including inviting everybody to Free House uh, for a networking. <laughs> The second day of the 2023 Burt Energy Summit. My name is Lara Sahar, and I'm currently serving as summit director for this year, and I'm co-leading the next year's summit. Our theme for this year's conference is making the energy transition work. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Just uh, Arthur starting your jet leader, just the energy transition partnership initiative, and yet the government just funded a decarbonization strategy for the country in which. Uh, <laughs> about uh, storage technologies, and in particular, a lot of the batteries that we're putting on the grid right now, they're, they're very similar to or the same batteries that we're putting in the car, but they're not optimized for the grid. We are very lucky to be joined here today by Dr. Cheryl Martin and Gabriel Kroc. Um, so thank you for being here, and thank you to everyone who's come out from across the Bay Area and the country to be here as well. You have to, um, you know, you have to look at what's, what's on right, in these in these times, and um, you know, I know Gabriel when you started that. Companies in my portfolio, you know, that are still, you know, they're going to invent a widget that's going to solve climate change. <laughs> is a Senior Director of Grid Research Innovation and Development at pg &E. So maybe just let's do a quick welcome to this fantastic panel. <laughs> so welcome to Energy Flexibility in the New Grid. Team, much of them was actually in Southern California where they're dealing with, of course, the same issues. Speaking to public agencies um, about, um, about local energy project grids. Um, because what we are doing in seven locations within an hour drive here um, about this is um, is deploying rooftop solar, battery energy, energy solar. And a lot of hour, which is a ton of money to be able to use resources like power walls, right? Um, to use energy storage. Hopefully one day to be able to use an EV to be able to feed into the grid during those periods of time. The California Public Utility Commission is also asking for thousands and thousands of megawatts to come onto the system between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. It's a toughie, and I'm willing to open it up. You want to take a shot at it, Emily? Well, I, I do because I think um, we, we touched a little bit on the, the importance of equity in this transition and having a just transition for, we've mostly been talking about the state of California for this. Because the public agencies that are focused on building them, 
know that they need to focus on the library or the community. How can we start to pivot that? Where do we need to pivot it? I got too much solar. We got negative prices on energy today, happening in the middle of the summer, right? Where we're curtailing solar. Putting more solar on the, on the rooftops of people is great if I can figure out how to store that and use it during other places. Where do we need help? Energy storage. And here's the anyway the kind of economic idea behind them. Look easy and I get it, you know? Really, the CGC has decided that storage care disorder is uh, the way to go and the question then becomes how do we uh, properly get it? This is supposed to be about decentralized resources. Thank you, Tim and Don Juan, for your vision for this. So one possibility you could speak to is some opportunity or challenge in this space that maybe we haven't said enough about today. Or you could say something completely different. And maybe we'll go off in opposite directions. So Jeff, when will you start? Okay. Um, I think, to be honest, uh, finding that middle ground. Uh, the utilities are going to be delivering our electricity. We used to talk about the grid defection risk, where everyone was going to have their own solar panel and batteries, and all of a sudden the utilities wouldn't be there anymore. It never made sense. It's not happening. Um, finding ways for the utilities to uh, see the, the benefits in supporting and um, kind of allowing the proliferation of distributed energy is really important. Um, and it's an enormously complex task for utilities to keep the grid running, uh, keep it safe, keep it you know reliable, um, and, and keep the cost down. And you can't expect the utility to bear the burdens of making it possible for a bunch of people to innovate on its grid, because like you said, that's going to be cost borne by the rate there. On the other hand, you got you got to make it possible for people to innovate on the grid. Um, it's it's a very complicated uh, kind of path to take. Um, so I don't know if it was a, I forgot to come up with a more kind of like incisive ending, but that's where I'll, that's where I'll leave it. I think mean, mine is going to be more of a call to action. Listen, I, I'm 42. I got maybe 15, 17 years left in me to try to make a difference here. Right? And it sounds like a long time, but it's really not. Um, we need your help. We need you guys to care a lot more than maybe our generation currently has. It doesn't, I'm not going to be able to solve this issue in my life. I don't have that many more years left if you think about what needs to happen. I can make a dent. i got to pass the torch, right? What I want to do is I want to create a platform by which somebody else can then take that torch and really run with it. But it's not going to be me. I know that. I don't have enough time. And so what I need all of you to do is care. Care enough to get into the industry. I don't care if it's teaching. I don't care if it's a vendor, I don't care if it's a regulator, I don't really care. I think that works for me. And one of the advantages to me of being in a really large company is the, uh, we've been talking about the challenges of decentralizing a grid, but a, the, the grid is a, a beast with its own technical and regulatory and economic and social factors that's, that's gonna be really hard to move. Um, so we need people who are moving it at the very decentralized level um, and, and people that are moving it at all different um, types of scales. There has never been a more exciting or important time to be working in this sector. I want to thank all of you for coming, and, I want, and let's give a big round of applause for our family. Thank you.
I'm a first year MBA student here at Haas. Uh, I spent the last five years in the fintech industry like realizing that we still have so much to do. Big thank uh, you also to our generous uh, sponsors, uh, thanks to, to who uh, this uh, programming is, is possible. And lastly, we wanted to say a humble and huge thank you to the amazing Sunny team uh, who uh, like put this uh, all together. Um, for the story, I mean, Ira got on campus like one year ago, like in August last year, and the first thing I did was to get involved in work. Uh, and uh, to get involved in the summit team, I remember my first discussion with Chad Powers, the VP Summit, and I'm particularly grateful to have been involved in this team. Uh, so thank you so much to uh, Chad, uh, who led the team. Thank you to Emily, uh, Jessica, Tara, uh, Don Juan, Tim, uh, Kelly, uh, Ola, and James. Thank you so much. You did, uh,